Okay, for you math aficionados and physics uh, majors, uh, not for the general public, uh, I'm gonna, I want to just spend a little time showing you um, in, in a short time how to derive uh, th those quantities, the energy density of matter, radiation, and dark energy. I want to show you why dark energy has its properties it has mathematically. What I'm talking about is contained in, in various textbooks, but not all in one place. And I also want to, um, in some cases, do a sort of quick and der dirty derivation instead of a longer derivation to help, so we can do it in, in no time. But it's pretty, pretty easy to understand with just a little bit of calculus. So to understand the evolution of, of, uh, of matter, energy, and dark energy in the universe, we just have to use that equation, which I'm now going to write in differential form, that the, the change in energy is equal to minus the pressure times the change in volume of a system. Now, um, we just have to remember in a given volume, the energy is the energy density times r cubed. So we'll take the derivative of that, which is the energy density times derivative of r cubed plus r cubed times the derivative of the energy density. And then the right-hand side is minus the pressure times the derivative of the volume, which is the derivative of r cubed. Now, what's the derivative of r cubed? It's quite simple. We go, it's rho 3r squared dr plus r cubed d rho equals minus p times 3r squared dr. Well, I can bring this over to this side, and I get r cubed d rho is equal to minus 3 p plus rho times r squared dr. Let me now finally divide both sides by r cubed. and rewrite this as d rho equals minus 3 p plus rho dr over r. Now this is a differential equation. To solve it, very simply, we just have to know what the relationship between p and rho is. This is what's called the equation of state. When you know the equation of state of a substance, you can determine the amount by which the energy changes as, as the size of the substance changes. Now, I told you for matter, p is zero, okay? Now, um, we can, um, uh, because in fact, as I told you, for, for non-relativistically at least, um, if I have matter impinging on, say, the outside of a balloon, what Maxwell showed is that the pressure of any system of particles with average velocity v is the average velocity squared, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the average of the velocity squared divided by three. Why the three? Because the particles are moving in three dimensions. And so uh, given that averaging over the angles that the particles can hit the balloon with, you get that factor of one third. Okay, well, that factor will come back later in a second. But for galaxies where v is zero, p is zero, and therefore d rho is equal to minus three rho dr over r, and that becomes uh, a differential equation that you can solve. You can, you can write it as d rho over rho equals minus 3 dr over r, and that means the log of rho is minus 3 the log of r, and the solution of that is that rho goes as r to the minus 3. Okay? Now, with, uh, what about for radiation? Well, Relativistically, you're always talking in terms of, of uh, comparing velocities to c. Now, it turns out that this even this is a non-relativistic uh, um, uh, derivation because, of course, you're talking about momentum transfer to the walls. And for radiation, uh, momentum is an mv. It's actually e is equal to pc. Uh, but when you work it out, the same result holds. Namely, if I if I just um, if I call the speed of light one here. Which is, which is generally the easiest thing to do in relativity because then you just compare everything to the speed of light. You get that the pressure of radiation, since, since light is moving at speed c, 
and the speed of light is one here, is one third. And if you plug in one third here, you get minus three times one plus one third, which is, make, turns this to be minus four thirds, and you end up getting d rho over rho is equal to minus four dr over r, and lo and behold, that means that rho goes as r to the minus four. Now, what about dark energy? Well, now we just need to know two things from physics and one from sort of mathematics. And that is, in physics, we write pressure and energy density as, as components for an ideal fluid of what's called the energy momentum tensor. The energy momentum tensor has a form, the zero zeros component is rho, and then for a, for, for a fluid where where, which is uniform and isotropic, the off-diagonal pieces are zero, and the, the, um, these pieces are the pressure. That's the form of the energy momentum tensor for uh, a general fluid. Now, what about when you put energy in empty space? Well, what's the energy momentum, energy momentum tensor for an energy in empty space? Well, this is a tensor, and... Lorentz invariance tells us that this, the only, if we're going to relate this to anything, it has to be proportional to another tensor. Now, if there's nothing there, there's only one tensor in general relativity, and that's the metric. And so the energy momentum of an empty space, if it's going to have non-zero energy momentum, has to be proportional to the metric. But, well, in the units I'm going to, in the, in the convention I'm going to use, the metric in flat space is 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1. And if you look at this, this shows you that, that P must equal minus, must be negative. And um, in fact, since, what, since, since this is proportional and we know the, this term is rho, then you must have, this must be rho times g mu nu, and you must have rho in, rho in all of these components here. And therefore, the pressure is equal to minus rho. And you get this result that I derived for you before. So we can understand from general relativity and a really simple understanding of just work being done on the universe, how all of these components have the form they do. And uh, you can do it you know, with a little hand waving in uh, seven minutes. So that's for you math aficionados.